All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. It is June 19th, 2025, 11.09 a.m. local time, West Coast time here. Got uh, latest earthquake activity shows a 0.8 uh, across Southern California, it looks like, or actually Northern California here. Uh, a little bit of movement up along the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone as well since last night. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, activity here starting off in the Pacific Northwest. Got a little swarm going on up here north of Seattle. Looks like that's on the Devil's Mountain Fault up here. Pretty good cluster of earthquakes that uh, looks like it began yesterday sometime last night. Uh, got some twos in there. The largest so far, a 2.8. Again, that's on the Devil's Mountain Fault. Fairly lengthy fault system here that runs just north of Oak Harbor. Well north of Seattle, but uh, some interesting activity striking out there today. Uh, the volcanoes out there, though, pretty quiet. Only a couple of smaller quakes there around Mount Rainier. One earthquake on the Seattle Fault, it looks like. Fairly new. That's uh, obviously a dangerous fault system there that we got to watch for the uh, Seattle area. Uh, Northern California, mostly smaller microquake activity out here today, and the majority of that is from yesterday. Really nothing above 2.5 out here. Uh, Southern California, we're kind of watching that... Uh, little sequence of events on the Parkfield segment of the San Andreas Fault from yesterday. They had a 3.4. I don't see anything else showing up on this area today. Uh, the last one was a little one-pointer late last night. But still keep an eye on that. Uh, extreme Southern California, nothing above 2.5. Got uh, generally small microquake activity out here today. Uh, looks like a typical day out there in Southern California. Up into the Yellowstone area, well, Idaho, Stanley, Idaho, got uh, one earthquake from this morning. It looks like a little 1.5. The swarm has died off uh, drastically here. It's just kind of dropped off like a rock, but still think we got potential for seeing some larger earthquake activity. Just a matter of time on the sawtooth fault system, that is. Uh, up in Yellowstone, a little 1.2 from yesterday. That... Uh, that's going to be this earthquake here I pointed out last night near Purple Mountain, Maple Creek. Not a whole lot going on here today, though. It uh, looks pretty darn quiet across Yellowstone National Park. Uh, oil fields, nothing new down there. Still seeing the continual earthquake activity. Up in uh, Ohio, 2.3 this morning. Outside of Cleveland, it looks like very close to the Lake Erie region. They get uh, some earthquakes up here on occasion. I think it was last year, maybe even the beginning of this year, a number of earthquakes struck up here. Nothing big, <clears throat> but we do get some smaller quakes on occasion out there. They sit uh, somewhat of the outside zones here of hazard areas. But uh, they can, you know, these little microquakes can occur pretty much anywhere. All right, taking a look at the global view of things. Still watching the region out here across the Western Pacific. Another earthquake here in Japan. That one pretty shallow just shy of the Nankai trough uh, about uh, six miles deep or so underneath this area for a 4.7 earthquake uh, let's see if we got anything else stirring up there on the globe in that area looks like some movement northward today along the curl cam chatka with a couple fours up there uh, some newer activity down south as well just starting to fill in north and southern regions here of the western area of the Pacific plate because of all this movement here yesterday a lot of activity uh, around the Crow Cam Chatka was starting to squeeze in areas north and south. Watch the Nankai Trough. I keep saying it, but it's yeah, it's coming up, I think, here for some large earthquake activity. Uh, Taiwan southward into the Philippines. Pretty good cluster movement. Uh, some threes and fours. Nothing big. 5.5 here across Papua New Guinea. Uh, definitely getting uh, some moderate size movement going on here across this area of the Pacific Plate. Quiet zone today. Uh, extends down here across Vanuatu into the Fiji Islands. New Zealand, nothing new to report here um, following that uh, earthquake yesterday. Had a, somewhat of a decent sized quake there, 4.4 uh, from yesterday. I think there was something else in there too, right? There was a five pointer. We're just beyond that 24 hour threshold there, so I had to go back to the last week. But yeah, 5.1, 4.4 couple other smaller quakes in there as well that's um, just shy here of the plate boundary let's 
take a look here and see if there's anything else major going on around the globe. Uh, wow, holy moly, look at that. Bunch of activity stirring up out here in the Atlantic. This all kicked up from last night, it looks like, or maybe even this morning. Let's see what we got. Uh, it's a decent swarm out there in the fracture boundaries. Uh, USGS showing four earthquakes here. Uh, the largest of 5.3, most recent uh, five-pointer, but these, it looks like this all stirred up about 5, 6 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, there may be a number of smaller quakes in there as well, as noted on the Earthquake 3D globe. That's a, a decent uptick. Last time we had something like that of this nature of large magnitudes, we've seen, uh, well, some large earthquake activity ramp up across the Mediterranean and over here uh, along the plate boundary leading towards Nepal. Uh, Myanmar, I think, had that seven-pointer uh, shortly thereafter, that swarm uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. So it's, uh, well, watch that. This just happened this morning, so I don't see anything of any major earthquake activity yet across the area. But uh, this that region, obviously, big-time producer of getting the plates moving out here. The uh, Atlantic Rift Zone. Notice the arrows here pointing away from each other. We're roughly about in this area down here where we're seeing that swarm uh, the general plate strain right when it separates here uh, could, could go potentially either way uh, it does have an effect here on the South America plate last time we seen it happen though it had a, a pretty harsh effect on the uh, Africa plate notice the arrows all pointing in this general fashion here towards the Northeast it really ramped up really ramped up earthquake activity here uh, following our last sequence of large quakes out there in the Atlantic similar to what we're seeing although I think we had a couple sixes in there uh, that was uh, a couple months back but now we got uh, a swarm of activity out there so just keep an eye on things uh, Alaska a couple smaller earthquakes up there nothing big happening for now uh, I don't think we got anything uh, of noteworthy mentioning yeah all small microquakes up there it looks like except for some down there along the Aleutian Trench from yesterday, uh, four-pointer. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. This is along the uh, San Andreas Fault here, that little earthquake, 1.7. Nothing south, but I think that's fairly well locked here across the Parkfield segment leading down into the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, this I, I like to point out stuff like this when I see it because it's been a little while since we've seen a 3.4. Uh, in a little sequence of events there across that area of the park field segment of the San Andreas Fault. All right, let's see what we got for space weather activity. A um, little bit calmer today, it looks like. Actually, we're down into the B flare class right now. B 8.9, uh, number of C flares overnight, almost into the M flare category. Nothing major since our uh, X flare event a couple days ago. Let's see what we got going on here. Sunspots out here, still numerous. 4114 starting to decay though. I'm noticing, um, looks like we're losing some of that deep colors and the popcorn intermixing of the magnetic structure here. Um, so really, uh, I don't know if that's even gonna be able to produce any uh, large inflare activity, but we'll leave the inflare activity um, forecast up a little bit still might produce some um, uh, back over here a newer sunspot coming into the more earth directed view um, man there's definitely some complexity in here but not as happening as 4114 was here a couple days ago when it produced that X flare uh, so the flare threat looks like it is dropping right now 20% chance for X flare and flare still elevated at 65% chance um, we'll see how those two sunspots hold up no major roars there in the forecast. Maybe a G1 class storm if we're lucky. I don't think we're going to get much here just for a very short duration on the UTC date of June 20th. It looks like that will be later tonight, but uh, it's just, yeah, June 20th is uh, would be tonight. UTC time right now, 619 at uh, 1820. So watch for that. Again, I'm not really expecting much there at all. Little disappointed there in 3114 with the. Uh, I thought we'd be popping off some more X flares, but hey, well, at least we got one of them. 
Um, close approach asteroids here. Ooh, look at that one. Definitely want to keep that one away. 1,200 foot stadium size asteroid. That could do some big time damage if it uh, entered into the atmosphere. Uh, that's uh, for us, fortunately, over 3 million miles away. That's a good deal. Lots of uh, asteroids here. Some newly discovered large ones as well, but uh, they're fairly safe there at a couple million miles away from the planet. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather today. Got uh, an enhanced zone across the eastern war uh, eastern region here. Looks like that's around uh, uh, Baltimore, Washington, New York. Got a 2% chance for some tornado activity. Wind, and uh, looks like the main threat's going to be some wind, hit, uh, wind threats out there. And the red got a decent 30% uh, uh, chance there around Baltimore and Washington region. A little bit of health threat out there as well, but mainly across the northern plains. Uh, that's for the day today. Uh, for Friday, severe weather returns or continues out there across uh, the uh, Dakotas. Tornado threat, big time wind, and uh, some big time hail out there as well. Notice that severe weather pattern is definitely shifting well north here for this time of year. But that's very typical for the uh, summertime. Uh, I do believe we have a massive high pressure ridge out there uh, controlling this pattern. Right now it's parked over about the Four Corners area. That's going to move off to the east a little bit, pushing uh, that severe weather out of the region for a day. But then it looks like uh, some more returns uh, towards the uh, beginning of next week, middle of next week as well. But California, we got uh, some cooler weather coming up here. Not expecting much. I don't even think any rainfall for California. Most uh, most of the rain will be up in Washington and Oregon. Um, but we'll be uh, below average. and. Uh, some places well below average, so I'm okay with that. Nice little relief from the heat that we've been uh, experiencing out here. Going to be cooking up there in the uh, Dakotas, though, for a little bit. All right, uh, what else we got out there? Seismograph stations all quiet for now. Nothing showing up there as far as earthquake activity goes. I hope you have a good Thursday. We will catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening, folks. Uh, enjoy your day, and please stay safe out there.